Hello and welcome to the Howard Wright Know Your Money podcast. I'm Ashley Smith and I'm Tom Richards. On the Know Your Money podcast we talk everything finance from financial planning tips to how what's going on in the world around you affects the money in your wallet and most importantly your financial future. If this podcast helps you please like and subscribe so we can help as many people as possible moving forwards. In today's episode we're going to be talking about buying a property through your pension. We've discussed the merits of pension investing in previous podcasts. They can be a very tax efficient way of saving for your future. Once you've invested your money in your pension, you need to then decide on what to do with your capital. For most, this will mean investing in one or a range of investment funds, usually diversified across different sectors, regions, investment types or asset classes, which may or may not include property. In today's episode, we will focus on investing into property directly through your pension. Firstly, let's have a look at property funds. Ashley, could you please start by explaining how property funds work? Yes, of course. So for most pension investors, exposure to property within their pension comes from investing into a property fund, usually in the form of an OIC or a unit trust. An investor's money gets pulled together with other investors' money and is usually used by fund managers to purchase physical property, such as office blocks, warehouses, or other commercial property. Um, The idea here is that those properties will generate a return in the form of rent um, or in the form of appreciation as the property value increases. If you wish to have property as part of your pension, it can be a very good way of accessing a diversified property portfolio with small levels of investment. You don't need to personally be able to purchase the whole of an office block or a warehouse. Mm -hmm. Like purchasing property, outside or personally um, outside of your pension when using a, an investment fund they can face the same liquidity issues so what i mean by that is if you're coming up to retirement and you require access to your capital either in the form of a lump sum or regular income to fund your, your retirement income um, the fund needs to have sufficient cash flow to be able to pay you and other investors if there's not sufficient cash to pay all of the people that want their money back um, unlike equities, which can usually be sold on an exchange quite quickly, uh, property requires a buyer to be sought and it can be a much longer process. As such, um, it's much more likely than your normal equity based fund to restrict outflows or even sort of stop them completely for a, a specified period of time. That's great, thank you. So, rather than investing into property via investment funds, you can actually purchase a property directly within your pension. Could you now explain to our listeners how this actually works? Yes, I can. You are correct there. So it is possible to purchase a property directly within your pension. So rather than using a fund, you can physically buy the bricks and mortar. When doing so, you usually have to have a more specialised and usually more expensive pension type. Uh, These are known as a self-invested personal pension or SIP, as I'll refer to it moving forwards or a small self-administer scheme, or a SAS, which I'll I'll refer to that as a SAS moving forwards. I won't go into depth about sort of the the sort of ins and outs of all the different pension types here. We'll cover that in a a separate podcast. Um, We do sometimes get asked by our clients if it's possible to purchase a residential property through their pension, either as a main residence or as a buy to let. Um, The simple answer to this question is yes, but it's not usually a good option. Um, The longer answer is that whilst you can technically purchase that residential property within your SIP or your SAS, you would usually face a a tax bill on doing so of 55% of the value of the property. Um, And any investment gains that you might get on that as well um, could also be further to the subject of further tax charges on top. Um, It's also worth adding here that whilst technically you can put that uh, residential property into uh, a pension, most providers actually won't allow you to do it, um, even if you were willing to pay the tax mm-hmm. charge. So it, yes is a short answer, but actually in reality, it probably is very difficult to do. And if it is, it's probably not worth doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so although investing into a residential property isn't really an option, um, investing into a commercial property is. Um, so commercial property that's permitted is very broad. So those that won't have a, a, a tax charge on them, there are lots of different options um, from uh, factories that, that some of our clients want to purchase their own factory units, their own office blocks, mm-hmm. warehouses. Um, you can even put restaurants, farmlands, airports and zoos into a pension as well. 
Um, the major benefit of holding a property in a pension is that when the rental income is paid, certainly if it's paid from your own company, um, it's a huge benefit, but, but whoever's in there, when they pay that rental income to you, uh, there's no income tax on it because there's no income tax within a pension. Also, uh, any growth on the value of the property will also be free of tax as well because, again, there's no capital gains tax within a pension. Uh, similar to the property funds, consideration really needs to be given to liquidity. Um, and what I mean by that is, again, if you wish to start drawing income, but the majority of your capital is tied up in office blocks, warehouses, zoos, or whatever else it is that you've bought from a property point of view, if you want an income, you can't sell 10 bricks a door and a window, you need to sell the entire property. And that can take time, um, and again, could delay your retirement if you were going to be reliant upon that to provide you an income. That's a, a great in-depth summary there, Ash, so thank you very much for that. Is there anything else our listeners should be aware of when purchasing commercial property within a pension, such as additional costs or any potential tax charges? Yeah, so I've touched upon uh, one of the major benefits being that uh, the rental income and any growth generally is tax free. Um, however, um, just like when purchasing a property personally, um, when you use your pension to buy a commercial property, you are subject to stamp duty. Um, so a stamp duty is effectively a tax that will be paid based upon the purchase price of that commercial property. Now the first £150,000, so if you buy a property for £150,000 or below, there is actually no stamp duty uh, there at all. For the next £100,000, um, so from one fifty dollars to £250,000, it's 2% and anything over that, it's 5%. Um, VAT, uh, VAT, value added tax, is also potentially payable on the property. Now one of the first things to keep in mind here um, is that when it comes to commercial property and VAT, there is no one rule fits all. Um, what I mean by that is you might have two identical properties right next to each other. Uh, one of them may have been elected for VAT, which means it, it, it's mm -hmm. subject to VAT on the purchase price. And the one next door may never have been elected for VAT, which means that there's no VAT on the purchase price. Now, if VAT is payable, uh, it's 20% of the purchase price. Uh, therefore, if you buy a commercial property for £200,000, the VAT on that property purchase alone uh, is another £40,000. Now, it is possible for the pension fund to claim that VAT back, so you do get it back. But unfortunately, you do need to, to pay the VAT up front when you purchase the property and then you reclaim it afterwards. Another point to note as well um, is that VAT is actually payable on the stamp duty as well. So it's almost a tax on a tax. Um, so uh, yeah, as the stamp duty is payable, your VAT will be payable on it as well. Um, the VAT can still be reclaimed on that stamp duty, but unfortunately you never can claim that stamp duty back. Yeah. Um, additional costs that probably need to be considered as well and are worth bringing up here um, is that you will usually have the normal fees whether it's in a pension or not so things like solicitors fees um, any valuation fees any searches that you want to undertake um, they would all need to be paid as well um, some of the pension providers as well some of those SIP or SAS providers do have additional fees within their pension when you have a property held as well because they will have the administration um, about having that property in, in the portfolio um, you may often find that they also have additional charges in some instances not always but for things like submitting VAT returns and reclaiming VAT for you on your behalf that's brilliant I think those additional points there will be, be really useful for our listeners one final question I have, and it's from an inquiry we had last week, is is it possible for you to borrow money within the pension to fund your property purchase? Uh, yeah, simple answer. Yes, it is. Um, if you haven't got sufficient capital, um, you can borrow money to purchase that property in the same way that when you go and buy your first house. Um, you may borrow money or, or move house, you may borrow money as well. Um, there are some limits, however, um, and some sort of rules around what you can borrow and, and how it needs to be structured. So uh, the pension scheme can only borrow up to 50% of its value. So if your SIP has £200,000 in it already, you can borrow 50% or another £100,000, getting you up to 300000 But please keep in mind, out of that, you may find you have to pay your stamp duty, your VAT, yeah. um, and any other charges that you've got. 
Um, it's usually common for those loans to be made through financial institutions, um, so banks or specialist lenders to, to pension funds. However, uh, it is possible for uh, a policyholder that's got their own company that, that perhaps is buying their own factory unit um, to actually lend that money from the company to the pension, to the SIP. Um, any loan done here needs to be on commercial terms, so you can't just lend it interest free. It needs to be on the same sorts of terms that you would get if you were borrowing money from a bank. Um, but it is possible to do it. Uh, if you're considering using a pension to purchase a property, please contact myself or one of our chartered financial planners to explore if this option is suitable for you. The uh, best way to do that is to contact us via our inquiry form at www.howardwright.co.uk or to give us a call on 0345 688 4939. Thank you for listening to the Howard Wright Know Your Money podcast. I've been Ashley Smith. And I've been Tom Richards. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe or share on your socials. And if you're listening to us on Apple Music or Spotify, please leave us a follow and leave us a review. It really helps other people find the podcast, enabling them to know their money better and build stronger financial futures. Please check out the Howard Wright link tree below for loads of more articles, tips, tricks, articles and podcasts just like this one. And most importantly, stay, stay tuned, tuned for future episodes. episodes. This recording contains information from sources believed to be reliable, but no guarantee, warranty or representation express or implied is given to its accuracy. Howard Wright does not undertake any obligation to update or revise any future statements. Past performance is not a reliable indicator of future results. Investments can go down as well as up, and actual results could differ materially from those anticipated. This recording is for the information purposes only and has no regard to the specific investment objectives or financial situation of any individual. The information contained in this recording is not intended to constitute and should not be construed as investment or financial advice. Appropriate personalised advice should always be taken before entering into any transactions. No responsibility can be accepted for any loss arising from action taken or refrain from being taken based on this publication. Howard Wright is authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.